the first journal, early September. auditions that felt how I made them feel and not like dropping a 32 count phrase into someone's inbox for approval. I'm weary of dancing that feels like doing everything for somebody else. I'm weary of people pleasing and I'm lost about how to please myself. Weary of everything. And I offer that to God, but I'm weary of God. I'm bored and restless like a night of tingly legs when I need to sleep the most. I'm tired of people who move through this time like nothing has changed but the platforms. I'm jealous of people who can do that, and I don't want to be that either. I'm tired of seeing people make the same kind of art they could have made last year. I'm tired of not being able to make art and wanting to, and not wanting to make art when I'm able to. I'm tired of the slow and the ones who haven't slowed. I'm tired of motivation still being celebrated when it's such a scarce resource. I'm tired of expectation and meeting expectation and not meeting expectation, and I just want to say no. I feel like everyone wants us to do something, and I just want to say no. No. <laughs> I'm tired of creative space with people in it. I'm tired of silence and the lack thereof, tired of spirituality and the lack thereof. I'm tired of hope, I'm tired of doubt, and I'm tired of being seen and not held. I'm tired of being seen and not held. Early September to December. What makes us want to be machines? What makes us want to appear unaffected? Like we can do our jobs perfectly all the time. Like passion never takes a break on us. When we value ourselves by our work and passion drives work, the worst thing is to be without passion. There's no need for warmth, just a fire under your ass. And why do we teach each other that our asses have to be burning at every second? Why is that sexy? There is a Toni Morrison quote that I clung to early in quarantine that says, this is precisely the time when artists go to work. There is no time for despair, no place for self-pity, no need for silence, no room for fear. We speak, we write, we do language. That is how civilizations heal. It's from her article for The Nation called No Place for Self-Pity, No Room for Fear. Read it. Um... But it didn't exactly help me at the moment. And I wonder also if the guilt of self-pity helped her in the moment when somebody told her that. And I don't know if it was meant for a pandemic, but my new theory is that you can't step in to save the world when you yourself have lost a grasp of what the world is. I think we need a little room. I think most of us have a little room. But I think once we start growing again, it's time to leave our little rooms and do our language. September 17th. On the other hand, I'm like, where did all the artists go? We gotta get busy, Tony said. And then I have to be like, oh yeah, they're all people like you who are sad like you and feeling insignificant and extraneous like you and that's why i only want to make art right now about how i don't want to make art and also oh yeah some of them are making art right now but we're in a pandemic so all of it's just getting pinned up on the internet somewhere next to the makeup vlogs and black markets and fan fictions and billy eilish interviews and porn stars and mask making tutorials and the mall and your third cousin sourdough starter and yawn cat and omegle and everyone's job and school and entire social life but it's there <laughs> and has equal value even though it's two-dimensional and your dining room never leaves your peripheral vision and you'll get intimidated by the bar that's counting down the minutes you spend enjoying it and give up halfway through and forget to watch the rest later and it's not as gratifying as shutting down the browser and stalking people on instagram and honestly that's okay December 5th. I've made my way through most of 2020 at this point, and here's the tea, folks. No performance on digital media 
is going to be better than holding someone's hand. No Instagram video is going to be more of a dance than teenagers getting down in the middle of Michigan Avenue singing Fuck Lori Lightfoot. No cinematic moment is going to stick better than standing in a dark alley for 10 minutes staring at a full moon. And nothing is going to hit harder than a news headline. So don't work too hard. The world itself is pulling focus right now. Just let it have its moment. Just show up to its show. October 29th. The unequivocal learning. The big challenge. The unorganizable messiness. The most frustrating love story. The mind fuckiest outsides. The smoothest insides. The very, very well hidden treasure. The time without an end. The endless learning. The challenge of the go. The spreading of a big map on a small table. The room full of corners. The seasons without names. The water I haven't entered. The cold that hasn't come. The coffee that's taking too long to brew. The hole I haven't fallen through, though I like to play at the edge. The scaredness in our faces. The music that comes out. The shifting under our feet. The steadiness of our hands. The cooling of our blood. And the fire in our bones. And the unknown buried in our foreheads. And the known that's in our eyes. And the mystery that's in it all. And the quietness in our breath. Mid-October. Dancing hurts for me right now. It hurts like a life I let die, and a lover I let slip, and a part of me I numbed off, and I miss it like a motherfucker. And I want it back now, but it's too much on my heart to shoot all back in right now. I can't feel too much because there's just too much to feel, and I don't know if that makes me a bad artist, but I don't think so. Don't ask me if I'm dancing. I'm not. October 23rd. I want to be touched and never touch a computer. 2020 has me shivering, has me cold, has me scared, has me small, has me restless, has me in a version of me that feels like someone else, has me out of body in neither a red nor a purple way. 2020 has me not even looking in my own eyes, has my eyes down and my heart down and my beliefs down, has me jealous but with low energy, has me inactive and still hit by exhaustion, has me anxious for no end. And 2020 has me motionless, on the dance floor, in my mind, in my progress, like I'm going backwards and down, if anywhere. And I know 22 is always a transition, but I didn't expect the headless floating and feet dragging and disorienting decenteredness and utter lack of will. And I don't feel unwanted, but I feel unneeded by myself. I don't feel unseen, but so unheld and hidden by my own choice. Not excluded, but set aside for later. Like I'm putting myself on a shelf to pick up when it's better. In April, I was asked to write a love letter for a class, and it seems appropriate to share here too. Hi. I miss spaces you were in with me. I miss your arms dancing around me and your hair flipping into my peripheral vision and you running into me. I miss the days where I could be held by you, or we could have a firm and purposeful hug, or I could lay my head on you for a brief second when the day was hard to get through. 
Sweating without contact isn't as fun, and navigating furniture rather than bodies doesn't have the same thrill, and fucking up when no one is watching somehow isn't as satisfying. I miss your attention, and your energy that was palpable physically, easily within the room. I miss eye contact and winks and shoulder squeezes that I had to turn to look at because I was in a space where so many people would have done it. I miss watching you and being proud, and I don't know if pride is the feeling, but I miss watching you move like you move and loving you for it. And I miss knowing that I'm loved in your presence and not having to tell you I love you with words, which all seem a bit empty now anyway. I miss smiling at happy, sweaty strangers after a class, and I realize now more than ever that when we exchanged words like, it was nice dancing with you, we were being so honest. I hope we dance together soon. December 6th. One of the most spiritual experiences of my life was when I was at the club with my friends, and I had not slept in a very long time, um, and it caught up with me. And so I just sat and watched people in beauty bar. And people (laughs) are so beautiful. People love each other so much. People love dancing with each other and loving each other and singing Whitney Houston lyrics about it. And it's like they mean them as much as she did when she wrote them and it's like it's so beautiful to see people who are all feeling something the same but different and celebrating the feeling together and it's nice to remember now that we miss so much so much that there were moments when we really did know how lucky we were, even if we weren't conscious of it. No date. Anytime I dance anymore, I dance about missing dance, but I can't just dance so I don't miss dance. This year has me feeling like something bottomless that can't be filled. There are little things I try to drink up, but they always disappear somewhere. Dance used to fill up my cup any day and kept it from going empty. And when I think of walking into a studio on a Saturday morning with creaky bones and a coffee to lubricate them, drowning myself in warm things and swimming on the marley to wake up, wrapping myself up in someone just to say good morning, all I want is that again. All that keeps me up sometimes is imagining the endless Saturday morning party that must ensue when we can all go back and fill each other up and remind ourselves that we're still here, that we're still significant, that we're still special, that we're deeply loving and deeply meaningful and deeply wanted and deeply grateful. And it's hard to be grateful when we have to be without what was ours, but I swear it's on a shelf somewhere.